Welcome to Driving Impact with a Fine Tooth Comb. We're welcoming our speaker, Andy DeLeon, who's going to be telling us how data teams drive impact and talking a little bit about the journey that we take to analytics engineering, which for many of us is an unusual journey. And then you find yourself in a data role and you are all of a sudden responsible for driving impact and explaining to people why this weird thing called analytics engineering matters and how to make it impactful for your organization. Now, as always, you'll want to head to Slack for any questions or comments. The Slack channel for this is up on the board uh, right there, and we will be monitoring that throughout the, um, throughout the talk. And then afterwards, Andy will go back and answer any comments or questions. So everyone, give a big round of applause for Andy, and I will let her take it from here. Thanks, everyone. OK. Uh, so, oh, um, can we get that little sidebar off of the? Oh, okay, excellent, cool. Okay, great. Um, so, as I said, uh, I'm Andy. I work at 30 Madison, which is a healthcare startup based in New York City, and I am very excited to give this talk today. So, you heard a quick little blur, but you're probably wondering who am I and who am I to tell you how to drive impact in an analytics uh, in an analytics capacity. So it's a very brief timeline of my life that only has four points you really need to care about. Uh, point one, school. I went to school. I was pretty nerdy, probably not cool. Probably getting some vibes that that might resonate with a few people here. Yes? Cool. If you were actually really popular in high school and became an analytics engineer, I, I would like to meet you. Let me know. Let me know how you, how you manage that. Um, then I, after school and majoring in economics, which turns out I was horrible at, but kind of decided that that was like a, the thing people did. Uh, I went into investment banking. Um, turns, out, turns out I really like sleep. And I kind of got a lot of anxiety, well, for a lot of reasons, but um, waiting for Excel to like load, you know, when, you, when it just says like not responding. And you're like, is it, is it broken? Is it loading? I don't know, we're gonna find out, I'll be back in 20 minutes and we'll see. That was wildly unsatisfying and I thought there's gotta be something better than this, right? Um, so I taught myself SQL and that's kind of that's the beginning of data, kind of how we got here um, and why I'm on stage with you today. Um, so needless to say, and I took a somewhat circuitous route to the role that I have today um, and I think always the next question is so like, what's next? And I think that's a great question that, to be honest, I haven't quite figured out yet, but um, it's something that I might try to evaluate with uh, the framework I'm going to present today. Uh, so as I mentioned, I never quite fit in. This here is a picture of me at business camp uh, at age 14. Yeah, like I think people were going to like camp camp and I was like, this is my business plan. Um, so, to paint you a picture. Um, but I'm kind of full of contradictions, right? Like, I'm definitely type A in the, like, in the sense that, like, I'm not chill, right? But I'd like to think I'm, like, a fun type A person, like the Hufflepuff, like the, like, the Hufflepuff Ravenclaw, if you will. Like, I'm in Ravenclaw, but I'm fun. Or maybe I was, like, the nerdiest Hufflepuff, right? So I was kind of always in this, like, in-between world. I'm neurodivergent. Uh, I started my career in investment banking and have, like, very hippie parents. I never quite fit in, right? And I think that that's really interesting as I've gone through all these talks this week about what an analytics engineer is supposed to be. And it's a lot of things that also doesn't make sense. I think we're inherently kind of misfits, right? We don't really belong anywhere, and honestly, no one really knows where to put us. So going back to, um, I think someone else made this exact slide earlier this week, but I'm copying it again. This is the exact little definition of what an analytics engineering, uh, engineer is, according to a DBT blog article um, written a while back. Uh, TLDR analytics engineers are basically providing data sets for people to use themselves and be able to answer questions and, you know, hopefully build this like self-service world that we all would love to get to, but maybe it doesn't exist right now, right? Because I think the reality is, especially if you work at a really small startup, if you're a team of one, what don't we do? 
Um, I feel like sometimes I'm moonlighting as a product manager and an engineer and a finance person and telling someone this is what the data says, I think you should move in this strategic direction. And it seems like a lot. Sometimes I kind of want to turn that off and say, hey, we, we need to set some boundaries. And you can and you should. But I don't think this is always a bad thing, right? Maybe not fitting in and being a misfit is inherently our superpower. This is another article from DBT. So basically, I'm just stealing all of DBT's content, putting it on a slide, um, about purple people, right? Um, you've heard of maybe T-shaped people, people that are basically good at both business and technology, right? At my company at 30 Madison, um, we, as uh, the analytics engineering org, uh, sit under the tech team, right? But I have seen that also fit under the finance team, the operations team, in many different places, right? Because we kind of are inherently both. Um, and while I love this article, um, I think we're a little more than, than just purple people. I think we actually have a longer breadth of skills that we can and should utilize. Um, also, I love the, the picture of the one-horned, one-eyed, flying purple people eater. Um, I can't believe I actually said that. Yes. Um, but I'd like to think I'm like a little less creepy. I don't know. You guys can be the judge since you're, you're out over there. Um, I think the reality is our job is that we're caught between a rock and a hard place. It is hard to succeed because on one hand, as a serial generalist, it's going to be really hard for you to differentiate yourself as you become more senior, figure out what you want to do, right? At the end of the day, being, having a wide breadth of skills as an analytics engineer is great because now you know how to ingest and think about finance data and Salesforce data. But in the long run, you probably won't be modeling Salesforce data in the same capacity and Shopify data and you know, some other custom built tool all at the same time, right? On the other hand, I think being a domain expert sometimes pigeonholes you into a role that you might no longer be interested in, or you might be a specialist in a tool that becomes obsolete, right? So we have to think about being more than this. And while I think that um, the purple people analogy definitely gets at the, pl at the point of being somewhere in the middle, I think that there is another framework that might help uh, also explain um, kind of what our skill set is and help you figure out what your key differentiators are. Using the fine tooth comb. Now, I preface this with these are not all fine tooth combs. There are definitely some wide tooth combs in there, so, so bear with me with this analogy. Um, but the point here is that these combs are all different sizes. They, some of the teeth are different lengths. Some of them are different widths. And I think you can think about uh, all these skills that you have, both quantitative, qualitative, soft skills, hard skills, that you have as being the teeth of one of these combs. So let's take a look at my comb, because because uh, I'm up here. So um, taking a step back, I am, I'm choosing the comb that is probably like the least, least fine tooth comb here, on here. But you'll notice kind of on the right there are kind of these longer teeth, right? Um, so you kind of have in the middle there, I think, you know, technical skills. I've been working with DBT for four years now, which is crazy to say. Um, and I've used Looker um, for basically about the same amount of time. Obviously, SQL, ginger flavored SQL. Like, those are things I know down to pat. And I've also been at four different consumer subscription companies at this point. Most of them do other things as well. But that's my bread and butter. Like, those are things that I know down pat. I probably dream about begrudgingly. But, you know. That, this is the stuff I'm good at. Um, I think, you know, uh, as I mentioned, I started my career in investment banking. Uh, so there in blue on the right is, you know, a strong foundation, financial modeling. It's a little out of practice, but it's like riding a bike, right? Like I could come back to that, um, but I would definitely have to spend some time refreshing that skill set. On the left here in red and orange, uh, I have a few places where either I want to improve my skill set or I want to learn more about. And those are places that you don't necessarily have to see as like weaknesses, right? But maybe they're, they're specialty places that you do want to learn more about and you can sharpen certain teeth in your comb. So I want to learn more about, say, marketing automation, uh, marketing attribution. I feel like everyone's trying to get at the same questions and there are many, many tools that you can buy, but also I work at a, I work at a startup and bandwidth is always constrained, right? We're not necessarily going to implement every new shiny tool that comes up and I think there are a lot of great ways to say do that in DBT, for example. 
Um, other rooms for improvement, I have mostly spent my time, um, I would say, more in the DBT world, in the Looker world, making dashboards, doing what more of a data analyst does, and doing analytics engineering work. But I would love to learn more and, you know, about you know, data ingestion, uh, how data actually gets to Snowflake, um, event instrumentation, right? How many times has someone asked you, hey, I need a dashboard on X, and you're like, we don't, that's not a data problem. Like, you literally don't even track this anywhere in the world, right? Um, I would love to think of a better way to solution around that other than telling people, hey, please set up a 30-minute meeting with me way in advance about this, this event that you may or may not name poorly, right? There's got to be a better way. Those are rooms for improvement. And so when you're thinking about your own comb and the skills that you have, there are a few places where you can start as well. Uh, domain expertise. So on one hand, I did, I did say that you should probably not be uh, an expert of one thing, but again, our comb has many teeth, right? There's not necessarily a constraint. You can't be every, you, can, you can't be everything, but you can be anything, right? So there are definitely places to flex your skills. Um, and whether that's in, say, a certain industry or a certain business model, like consumer subscription uh, companies, or it can be a domain expertise in a certain part of a company, right? Maybe you came from a marketing background and then found your way into marketing analytics and then became an analytics engineer. There are many, many paths to this role. And so while you might feel like you're a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of uh, your own uh, knowledge of data and such, your business acumen is actually going to be the thing that sets you apart, right? Uh, being a marketing analyst before becoming an analytics engineer gives you a leg up. I think it's hard, especially in a place like this where everyone is kind of brilliant and is starting really cool startups and is heading data, data at like very cool companies to feel like you don't really have any key differentiators, right? But I guarantee you at your company or your next job, whatever it is, you already have skills that are not commonplace. Tooling, again, like we're at a DBT conference. Probably everyone in this room knows how to use DBT, but that's a really unique thing that you can bring maybe to your next place that if you are a team of one, right? So think about like the tools you use and maybe the underlying coding and templating languages, right? So I've been using Looker for years, but things that differentiate me or things I want to flex up on are better using Liquid in my LookML, right? It's uh, using, HTML links, honestly, to link out to certain resources and dashboards for key metrics, right? That's stuff that I can definitely learn about and is niche, even though you feel, might, may feel sometimes like, oh, looker, like everyone uses that, right? So this is a, I'm stealing this uh, market landscape uh, image from Bessemer Venture Partners. And this is like a quick snapshot of the dark data architecture landscape and kind of is more food for thought, right? So um, there's some stuff not represented here as well. I'm thinking like workflow orchestration, um, you know, data quality, data testing, but think about like where you might fit in on this map. It doesn't necessarily have to be everywhere. I think that's the thing we want to know more. Analytics engineers are inherently curious people. But think about maybe the two or three places where you really shine, the tools that you can bring, the partnerships you might have established with some of these companies and the underlying languages used to power all of your analytics products in-house. I'd also throw out here, don't un underestimate your soft skills too, right? These are teeth on your comb. I'm putting in public speaking because I'm speaking in public and I had to be self-indulgent since I feel like I was self-deprecating at the beginning of this. So public speaking, but I'd also throw in, there was a talk earlier on um, how to be a better writer. Writing, communication, right? How can you present your findings uh, in layman's terms? How can you present someone who like literally has not opened up Looker, they have a Looker account at your company, they've never actually used it. So how do you go from, you know, explaining all the, all the work it required for you to ingest that data, to think about modeling it in an extensible way that maybe other teams can use, um, and then building a dashboard on it, and then maybe coming to like inconclusive findings or really places you have questions about. How do you communicate that to someone who kind of just wants a clear-cut answer from you, who doesn't necessarily know what a data analyst is supposed to do, um, right? I think that is a vastly underrated skill. Uh, stakeholder management, right? I think as much as we are people that like to be in the code, I think there's also a lot of a lot of managing around the fact that 
a lot of people here work at startups. And what happens when uh, you know, there are just not enough people to get the work that's requested done? That's a really big need uh, that goes underrated and doesn't feel like a skill that people are trying to acquire. But I think these are like just a few examples to kind of up-level your uh, skill set. Partnerships. Um, you know, looking at the last slide, there are a ton of different companies that you can work with, right? And so the question is, how do you represent your organization both as, a, as someone who is like scoping out different tools for your own internal use? How do you think about presenting data to third-party organizations that are trying to work with you? How do you work with your biz dev team to pull those metrics and to make them extensible? Right? These are, again, really important skills that maybe don't fit in as well on like a line of paper or in the like, uh, special skills section of your resume, but are going to be the actual places that ultimately drive impact. Because if you're the world's best coder, but no one understands you and your data's not going anywhere, that's not driving impact. So I want you, uh, either now or kind of when you see this talk or after the talk, uh, type in uh, maybe in the Slack channel, what's in your home? Where are the places where you feel like you have strengths and where are the places where you want to learn more or there's room for improvement, right? I think that there's a huge network here that we can use um, both, you know, whether it's in your own company or here, um, of people that want to help, people that also really want to learn and a place that you can teach someone a lot of skills that, again, you might think are commonplace, but are actually so incredibly valuable to advancing someone's career. Uh, I'm going to quote Olivia Rodrigo right now, um, and I'm going to also make the point that um, sometimes life is one step forward and three steps back. And so for Olivia, I mean, wow, what a roller coaster she was, she was going through, right, post-breakup. Healing is not linear. And boy, did we subscribe to that in like 2021, right? So why should your career be? Um, and I think that's the beautiful part of this, the commonality, right? You don't have to go in order of all of these skills that you're good at in like worst to best and kind of like get them all even, right? You can go back to marketing and come back to data and then maybe try out something more in operations, right? The world needs people who are more data savvy, who actually have been on this side and understand what it means to be self-service, to actually be autonomous in using the data and solving the questions that your businesses need to know. So where do we go from here? Uh, these are just a few ideas, definitely not limited to this, um, but ask for help, right? I think, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely your own team, but if you're a team of one, like, this is the perfect place to get started, right? I also think at your own team, don't limit yourself to data people. Find people who have complementary skill sets. I am definitely someone who I have 10,000 ideas, and then I just kind of get started in the middle of, like, a DBT model and don't really explain that. And people are like, where did your time go? There's someone on my team I can think of who's really good at taking my crazy ideas and like the fact that I edited two DBT models into a Notion page that people are like, oh, okay, great, I see where we're going and where our time is, right? It's okay to have places where, you know, you're not the best. You don't have to be the best at everything. That's, that's what I'm learning in life and what I'm hoping to impart, right? Um, but find people that have complementary skill sets in and around the areas in which you work. Um, create partnerships, again, both externally and internally, right? Data is kind of at the center of a lot of different teams, and that's sometimes annoying, but also our superpower. Leverage your strengths, right? Um, think about what you do, not just in your professional life, right? I am up here, I was a theater nerd. Um, turns out it's really helpful for public speaking. Think about different life experiences and how you can translate that into being a data analytics engineer, whether that's through being a better designer, thinking of being a better executor, thinking of being um, a really great systems person. You already have a lot of skills here. And again, as I mentioned, don't stop at data. That's not to say everyone should get up and quit their analytics engineering jobs today. I would not recommend that. But I think the point is, we don't necessarily have to constrain ourselves to titles with data in them, right? I think we've, we've learned that the title of analytics engineer, one, is nascent, and two, can mean a lot of things at different companies. Um, I think there are a lot of other capacities that really need data people and don't know that they need data people as well, right? 
So don't constrain yourself to what you think you're qualified for based on some you know, arbitrary job description as well. Bring data into whatever you do next. I guess I'll leave this off with the fact that the only prerequisite for really succeeding here in analytics engineering and beyond is curiosity. At the end of the day, there are going to be tons of new tools and languages and, and, and partnerships that you will not have the skills to, like, to on day one, right? Um, I think DBT is a good example of places where people, I don't know what people were using before this, right? But like, people all came together and learned this new tool. The only prerequisite for you succeeding in that next thing is the desire to learn more, to continue to ask questions, to find those, those people that you can partner with so that you can ultimately drive impact. So with that, I hope I've given you a little bit of uh, something to chew on in terms of what your strengths are and how you can leverage your fine tooth comb. And I hope to keep the conversation going. Um, so feel free to DM me in the DBT Slack. I'm just Andy. I probably should add a last name given how large that community is at this point. Oh, sorry. Um, and um, yeah, feel free to find me on LinkedIn, uh, DM me. I'm, yeah, thank you so much.